<laughs> All good. Anyway, welcome to Networking Superstars School. It is fantastic to have you here. Many of you are on your journey to freedom, which is brilliant. You've taken your first step. You know, some of you are just in our community. Some of you are in our ambassadors community. And that's great. You know, this is for everybody. I thought, well, maybe we could create this this weekly call and do a question and answer just for uh, customers of the Six Step Sponsor and Sequence Pro. But then I thought, well, actually, there's a lot of people that comes to this call anyway that would still want to benefit from the answers that we give that may want to join the Six Steps in the future. And it just made sense to open it up to everybody. However, just, um, and then I'm going to put this probably as a replay in the back office of the Six Step Sponsoring Sequence Pro for any members and uh, customers. So there's a couple of topics we wanna to talk about today. And well, number one, the main topic is content creation and how important it is. And we're gonna go through seven perfect Facebook status updates. And also in the back office of this week's uh, Six Step Sponsoring Sequence in, in essentially the second lot of trainings. I'm gonna go into more detail about this. And in fact, you will be absolutely amazed at the content that is in there. You know, I've spent, I've spent the last two days creating trainings that uh, I said to Nicole, if, if you can't create content after going through this module, I don't know how you're gonna ever create content because there is that much information in there that will teach you how to do it. So I'm incredibly excited at that. Um, before we get into that, uh, there is a couple of things I, I did want to say, and that is a huge congratulations to our ambassadors. Now, we have some of them on here right now, and we also have some watching. And in order to become an ambassador, you need to go through the six steps. <laughs> I have to try and keep focused. Sorry. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't be sorry. Yeah. You, you, I, I bring the serious part to it. You bring the funny side to it. That's um, Okay, good. <laughs> it's more fun that way anyway. <laughs> so yeah, to become an ambassador within Networking Superstars, you need to go through the six steps. You need to create your own community. You need to get 100 members in your community. Uh, you need to get at least 10 comments on your post. You need to invest in your tools and trainings, which is My Lead System Pro, which will give you some of the extra knowledge that you need to be able to fill your um, community with new people. So anybody that is an ambassador gets to offer scholarships or a handful of scholarships to members of their community to if they were looking to join the six step sponsoring sequence pro um essentially the full course is 997 but our ambassadors get a scholarship or a handful of scholarships for the right people and if you are looking for a scholarship like that you have to be serious you have to be motivated and you have to be driven and there is an application process in place however what I was going to say is <laughs> um, I just wanted to give a big congratulations to the ambassadors because between them, with the launch of the six steps, they made over $3,000 in commissions and some of them have never made money before <laughs> online. And that to me is so, so, so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, what, what do you think to that? You think that's pretty, <laughs> you think that's pretty good? I think that's really good. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. Lives, isn't it? It's nice work <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and you know, through the six steps, people are getting results, they're getting more leads, uh, creating content, speaking to prospects, got so many people coming into their communities, speaking to people on the phone, sponsoring people, and ultimately making money. Now, the other exciting thing that I am going to share tomorrow is that uh, we also give a percentage of the income that we generate from the Six Step Sponsoring Sequence Pro to charity, uh, to a charity called Free the Children, which is one of the largest uh, char children's charities in the world. However, they still need a lot of money for various projects. And one of the things that we do here at Networking Superstars is we empower entrepreneurs like Nicole, like Laura, like Robin, like our other ambassadors. We provide the trainings and the same with yourselves who are on here right now, we provide the trainings to you so you can have success in your life and in your business and for your family. And so you can then go out and empower other people. So we empower entrepreneurs to empower others. And I'm so excited to 
announced that uh, probably next week I'm going to be donating $1,500 based on the income that we received from the Six Step Sponsoring Sequence Pro to empowering communities wow. and, and um, oh, you know, families and children worldwide. So that is exciting to me, really exciting. And it's just going to grow and grow and grow. Awesome. Together, we'll just make a yeah. massive, massive difference. That's awesome, Gavin. That's cool. Cool. I'm really yeah. pumped up. Yeah, well, we only did it because of everybody who's on here as well. So yeah. just thank you to everybody for Touch supporting everybody. Networking Superstars. Gets me teary eyed a little bit. I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. It gave me the little, you know, heebie jeebies. Mm. What do you We've call them on your side of the pond? Goose pimples. Goose pimples. Okay. Goose pimples. <laughs> Goose pimples. <laughs> Yes, we never know, do we, Robin? Yes, never know. We never know. We still wear dressing gowns, you know. We're, we're still scratching on that. House coats. Dressing gowns. Scenario. Or robes. Scenario. Scenario. We have to make fun of him. I mean, you know. Yeah. What would he do without us? If I love that you only make fun of him and none of the rest of us. <laughs> no! I we love, love you guys. We really do. <laughs> Do. He just uses weird words. Should, should we talk a bit of content then? Uh, and then we'll answer some questions in, in between. Yeah. But there's a few that questions I've, I've received inside of the group to uh, that, that many of you had, well, that a few of you had based on content creation. Um, I know many of you have been going through module one, which is about the eight specific stages to essentially taking a completely cold prospect through a process where they come into your community, you warm them up, you build the relationship, uh, you engage, you get engagement on your content, you speak to them on a getting to know you call, you invite them to a teaser call, you send them the presentation to your network marketing business, and then you speak to them on the phone and you know it's um, you close them into your business. That is the, one of the processes that many of you have been through and that's going to be the core process throughout the whole of the six step sponsoring sequence. In addition to that, we also have the six specific steps, which is create, capture, connect, comment, communicate, close. And you're going to be a master at that six steps. I can't do that. Six. No, that's seven. That's six. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a master at that repetition, 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 repetition until you get good at it. And the first step is creating content. Now, whoever feels like they would like to answer this question is, why would you say it is so important to be creating content on a daily basis? No, I'm going to have to pinpoint somebody. Do it, girl. Do it. Go, Laura. So you're visible in front of your people. Okay. Um, well, basically, if you're... Um, you're buying into this you should be using with attraction marketing principles so you want to be adding value to the people that you're talking to in your community um and you need to be consistent on a daily basis to show that you are there you're present you have um uh, invested interest in the people that are in your community and you're continually leading with value so it's always um good stuff that people are going to be learning from so they start to see you as an expert of what it is that you're talking about and you're continuing to build that no like and trust basis with them by continuing to add value. Pretty much summary for it. Exactly that. And um, yeah, it's it's. I mean, I think you know. To, to, in addition to what what Laura said, I mean, she's she, you know. It, it's it is is about adding value. It's about getting engagement in your community. Um, I think one of the challenges that certainly I faced for many years, and probably many of you do as well is that there are literally millions of prospects out there, millions, um, or millions of competitors as well. Because if you're in a network marketing business, the people that you're working with and who are in another company uh, and who are in one of the other tens of thousands of companies are essentially your competitors. So how do you differentiate yourself? And what Laura said is, you know, creating content helps you become almost like that expert and you don't even need to be an, a, le a legitimate expert because you know kind of to become a real expert you're looking at like 10,000 hours of study essentially and maybe not quite that much you've just got to know a little bit more than most people 10,000 hours that's Malcolm Gladwell's um had said uh, I forget exactly the quote but uh, 10,000 hours so five years of pretty much full time. If I wanted to be an expert in yeah. guitar, 
I couldn't be within a, within a couple of years. It would take a, lot, a little bit longer. And I think it's the same with anything. I mean, you know, now I don't need to think about this at all. It literally is, it just flows because I, I guess I've done it for so many years and probably the same with several of you as well. And if you think about your job, uh, it does take time, a long time to become a proper expert, but you don't need to be a proper expert. You just need to know a little bit more than the average person uh, or your average prospect who are other network marketers. So you've got to be, a, be, be creating content on a daily basis. Now, what Nicola, I'll ask you this question. What challenges do you see that stops other people creating content? Well, initial fear is the yeah. biggest one. Um, and it's something, you know, as we've been working with people that have started the course, um, a lot of the questions that I get are, oh my gosh, what do I even start writing about? And, you know, I tell them, well, what are you learning? You know, mm. um, if you're not if you if you're not thinking of things to write about, then you need to go read more and and watch more videos and glean more knowledge. Because really, it's just a process of investing, learning, teaching, investing, learning, teaching. So if you think about it in terms of helping people escape <laughs> the frustrations and struggles that you have been through by sharing your knowledge that you've learned, things that you've learned and experienced along the way um, in ways that are you know, inspirational and informative, um, that's a huge draw for people because like you said, the people that are not as far along in the journey as you, they're hungry for that. And, you know, um, it's not really like, uh, and I think there is kind of an old school thought process about, you know, almost that fraternity kind of, you've got to pay your dues and you have to take the pain. And I don't know if you guys have those over there. Um, I don't know if you guys have that kind of I, I, I know college. About it, yeah. Okay, I knew it. So here in college, yeah, we have, we have that. <laughs> it's called hazing, um, mm. you know, and, and you get put through this it's whole illegal. thing. And, and yeah, it's illegal. It's illegal, it's illegal. yeah. Um, so we don't haze here. But no, but there is this kind of mentality, this old school mentality in this industry about, you know, people having to kind of pay their dues and, and go through the struggles and, earn, you know, climb and earn you know, clawing and scratching, but you know, in my in my mind, and I think what we're all here to do, I think everybody would agree with me. We're here to spare people and and help people kind of you know maybe fast track them or help them get past and learn from some of our mistakes. Yeah, um, exactly. And inside of this this week's trainings, um, there is a specific training that is going to be very useful. Let me just find out what it's called again. It's called How to Break Through the Content Brick Wall. And in that training, I go into detail about how to do it if you've got any challenges, if you're blocked, if you're scared of what to write, if you don't know what to write, if you're scared of what other people are going to think, if you get writer's block, as Neil just said. Um, but everything is there for you as well so um i think there's also that fear that neil's just pointed out as well that they, they worry about not having enough posture um and not you know almost being false but actually if you just be yourself and you c come from the heart and you you're, you're not out to um make the scale you're out to help people and you just change your mentality then it's going to come across genuine and you that itself is gives you posture, you know, you're not going to be um, seen as fake or trying to do that sleazy car salesman type, you know, you can have somebody that kind of helps um, and somebody people feel that they can approach. And don't you think too, to Laura, like, don't deny people, don't hold back from people things that you know that will help them, you know, it's your duty. I know, see, I see shaking heads, good. Somebody That's what we're all here needs for. To hear what you have to say. Yeah, say, don't I, I deny them. But it's your me. obligation, yes, it's your obligation. Exactly, get it out there. I don't care how bad it looks, I don't care. If your hair's messy, it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> it's like crash. That was not you. I don't think it was anything in my room. No, it is <laughs> tornado, Robin. But it was a tornado warning. I did. Yeah. Tornado warning. But no, that was Shane playing cards. You know. They, oh, like, tornado Shane. Tornado ah, okay. Shane. Throw, throwing <laughs> them across the room. So, yeah. uh, value um, content type first before we go into seven different updates. Um, and and just again, 
uh, as everyone's here now, because some of you weren't here before, uh, if you do have any questions, there is a specific place to put questions. If you have them from the trainings that you've been through so far, uh, don't just put them in the chat because that just gets mixed up. Put them in the questions, which should be on the left hand side of this screen. It should uh, be a way to type into your question and then we can actually answer that question as well. Um, let me just bring Robin in, to, in, in for this quick, um, just to give this little point. Uh, and it, this varies from person to person. Uh, it varies, you know, I'll, I'll say this slightly different, Robin will say it's slightly different, somebody else will say it's slightly different. And that is, what, what ratio of content would you say works well for you? And I saw a, an interesting post in your community uh, recently, but just interested in, because you don't wanna be promoting con your business constantly. In fact, very, very little. So I'll let you answer that one. Yeah, I do 80% uh, value. So value meaning, you know, tips, trainings, inspiration, motivation, stuff like that. Then I do 10% fun, which is, you know, a fun question, a fun picture. You know, we are entrepreneurs. We don't sit in a cubby hole anymore. You know, <laughs> we try to get out. We have laptops. We do what we want. So 10% fun and then 10% promotional. And that's my little goal. So 80, 10, 10. Yeah. So, so essentially 80% kind of value, 10% promotional and 10% fun, as uh, as Robin said. Uh, and one of the, I mean, the great thing about what we do is we build communities. So we build, it's a Facebook group essentially, but it's a community. And inside the community, it's about building relationships with your prospects. It's about building a warm market so you can then follow up with those people and present your business opportunity if it's a win-win. How many groups have you been in or been added to that is literally a spam fest? You know, everybody just goes to it to automate and they set up automated software and there's all these posts that go out automatically. Nobody reads it, not even the people that spam their own links in there. Well, the communities that we create are completely different. They are high touch communities, meaning that we are personal, we are real people, we don't focus too much on technology, which means that everybody can do it and it's easily duplicatable. That's the key. That's the key to success is it's got to be easily duplicatable. It's got to be something that everybody can do. So perfect Facebook status update number one. And in the six steps module, uh, module one, essentially, because the pre-training was not one of the modules as such. Um, but I go into detail about this. I actually posted, this is just, these are seven posts that I came up with. Hey, Shane. <laughs> Every week, right? We got to make our appearance. <laughs> hey, hi. It'll, it'll be hosting these soon. Exactly. I'm teaching them. <laughs> Start um, business. Exactly. Yeah. That's the next generation of networking superstars. We're going to move you down just a little. There you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so, so, so these are seven updates that I noticed that did well. Now, there's more, but these are seven that work very well. And the first one is something that I posted in the uh, Networking Superstars Journey to Freedom uh, community today. And that is, it's called, I call it the complete the blank update. Complete the blank update. So, you know, I, I said, uh, I can't even remember the exact wording of the post. Let me just find it again. It was something like, in fact, I will find it. It was, what's the best book you've ever read? And then blank at the end. Or blank is the best book I've ever read, blank, something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so best book I've ever read is blank. Fill in the blank. Perfect. There we go. So try it in your community. And often what happens when there's a blank and there's a word that's missing, people naturally want to fill it in. It's, uh, it's something called the Zygarnik effect. And that is more of a... Um, our brain wants to fill in or complete an incomplete. So if you ever watch a soap opera or a drama or something that leaves you on a cliffhanger at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you naturally, you've pretty much got to tune in the next day to or the next week to know what happens. So this works really well. And, and this is a, an extra tip that I wasn't even going to talk about for anybody that creates um, video content, which probably not many people yet, but if you had, let's say you've got five points, you may have seen Brendan Brashard or other people do this as well, but they will write point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, and they'll they'll actually write the, write the point, but they'll put a label over it and they'll put five labels over it and then they reveal each point one by one. You know, that, so they don't give everything up front. 
they tease people gradually. Uh, and again, it's, you know, we naturally as humans want to fill in the blanks. So if you want to get engagement in your community, if you want to get people to comment, uh, another one is blank. So you put a little line is the reason that I get up every morning um, or blank is the most inspiring book I've ever read. And you can think of many different things that you uh, that you write, but it gets engagement. I don't know if uh, any of you had ever seen that post before. I think I think I've talked about it before. I think I've even taught it before. But it's um yeah it's it's kind of a, a question, a statementy question that gets engagement. Plus, it's a one world answer, so people on the go easily can put the answer in. Yes, very good point. Uh, Ray has just asked a, a, a good question. Let me just have a little look. Let's see what happens when we do this. Answer question. I normally, if, normally it comes up into the middle. So um, Ray says, are ambassadors getting on the phone with prospects to close or do they just have their signups automated and call only when a prospect signs to welcome them? Um, the way that we do it, Ray, is exactly the same process that you uh, that you went through. So we spoke on the phone. Um, you submitted an application. The applications come through to Networking Superstars and then we forward, we forward. <laughs> I got <them> well. <laughs> we we you know how to use message. it. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 application comes in. So, your prospects from your community submit their application uh, for their scholarship. The applications come to us here at Networking Superstars. I'm looking to find an automated way, but sometimes we have to check uh, to make sure who the referrer is first, and then we forward those applications on to um, to each of the ambassadors. Then the ambassadors speak on the phone to their prospect and it's 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 the great thing is the people that we spoke to which are all the customers from the six step sponsoring sequence pro it was not a sales call in any way shape or form it was an interview and if those people um if, if it seemed like they were ready and they were motivated they were driven they were excited and they were committed they got a scholarship essentially um so you know it's 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 the best call because you're speaking to people that know about the process and everybody here that invested in the six steps you went through the process to start with you you learn the videos and it's not like we're trying to sell anything to anybody it's people coming to us uh, and then us offering that opportunity to come on board so um, hopefully that answered your question uh, again if you've got any specific questions uh, just pop them into the left hand side and we will answer them as we go. Uh, I did see a question there from Jacob that said, are you concerned about Facebook's uh, zero algorithm and having to pay to reach your own audience? Um, no, not at the moment anyway. Uh, what we find with a fan page, yes. Um, and this is one of the challenges that we've had for many, many years. Fan pages are very, very, very hard to get off the ground. They're incredibly powerful and they actually have a lot more leverage than they than a Facebook group does. However, um, you've got to pay to reach your subscribers, basically, unless they are engaging with you. But nobody sees your uh, content on a fan page generally, unless you've got engagement. The great thing with a, a group or a community, which we build here at Networking Superstars, is that I don't know from I don't know about your experience, um, uh, Nicole. Let's say from, but what probably what you find, well, definitely what you find. Uh, I'm just just. Uh, bringing Nicole in as well. But when somebody joins a group, <laughs> I'm all ears, yeah? <laughs> oh, you've got muted. Am I mute? No, I'm, I'm here. No, no I, well, I, I, I had to stop responding so I could listen to you because I, oh, I, I, I can't, yeah, so. I'm yeah, listening. so when someone joins a group, um, they normally see an update that the admin of the group has posted in that group probably for about a month unless they actually engage in the, on the content have you has that been your experience as well pretty much yeah like if you join um, the group, um you're going to see updates yeah. from that group from the admin probably for four to six weeks yeah and then it goes away so you have to make sure that from time to time as the admin of your group you're kind of hey guys do you still want to see what's going on here if so you need to let me know and you need to interact because otherwise Facebook is not going to think that you're interested. So 
Um, yeah. You do have to, yeah, you have to stay engaged. Yeah, and we've only got to think about how many people. groups we're actually all in. I mean, I, I'm probably in about <laughs> 300 groups because people add you and, you know, you join groups. How many updates do you actually see? You only see the groups yeah. uh, where you're engaged in and you're commenting. Now, the most, the best thing about a group or a community is everybody in that group is is focused on the topic that you're teaching. So your target market, they're all together. It's a tribe of people. And as long as you're posting the right content, that's why this is so important. And you're posting message, your message matches your target market, message to market match. As long as you're doing that, then um, you're gonna get engagement. And the people that engage are gonna see your content no matter what. So um, hopefully that answered your question, Jacob. All right, let's move on to, uh, I'll, I'll answer Debbie's question shortly. Um, perfect update number two and Robin, Nicole, Laura are all very, very good at this. <laughs> um, and that is the value post, the value based post. I was like, what are we good at? You, I know, so I thought I know, what are we good at? We are good at a lot of things. <laughs> I was so, waiting to hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I know you're very good at value based posts and teaching. Would you, from your experience, how long do you think a value-based post needs to be? Does it need to be really long or can it be quite small still, but still give value? Um, I think it can be quite small and give value, but generally if I am teaching a particular topic, for example, this week I just did a focus on Instagram um, and instead of trying to cram it all into one huge, huge long thing, people will get bored reading. I broke it down into bits and it also gave me content to write every day and like that you were just saying that cliffhanger you know I was almost using that as a cliffhanger so part one was x y next part was z and did you want to actually know my secret sauce at the end <laughs> you know, and um it, it kind of keeps people engaged and it gives you things to write about for the whole day it gets it gets enough value in there but without being too long or too short um, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. I think everybody's communities are slightly different because they've got different people in the groups and, and we all teach slightly differently. We all have our own style. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and um, I think it's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, I generally try and keep keep it to, you know, you have to scroll a bit, but not too long, basically. Yeah, um, exactly. You have to click more comments but um very brilliant tip you taught me today was to try and catch their attention with the top line mm. so i changed my strategy slightly to do that um and yeah you know i think everybody's group's slightly different so people will respond differently um to different things well, I, yeah, I, just... I love what you said about um breaking the content up into so if you've got an idea uh, come up with five different ideas based on that big idea or even write one big post for yourself and then just break it up over the next three or four or five yeah. days and then kind of i mean you can even put part one of seven part two of seven part yeah. three of seven and it just hooks well, people. what i did to um this this time um i haven't done it before but what i did this is i made like a uniform template with an image um of instagram 101 and then i just changed the writing for kind of each highlight point so one was like why instagram how to get how to use hashtags i can't remember all the different things now but you know each day i did something different but i used the same template so when my people are looking to it because your group moves a lot especially if you've got people engaging on different posts they can find it easily with that image and that seems to have worked quite well for me this time Good. people who may be coming in later and going I saw you're doing Instagram. Have I missed it? I'm like, well, no, you haven't. You just look for the Instagram picture and you'll find it. Um, yes, easier to find. Well, that's good. Yeah. And, and you know, the great thing, the great thing about me being in my, my position as well is I get to hear what each of the ambassadors are doing inside of their community. And then we can kind of tap into the best ideas and what's working. Uh, and then we can teach that back. Uh, Nicole, one thing I was going to say that Laura just added, because um, I, I was doing some research in, in various communities today, just to look at the content people were creating. Oh, sneaking around, um, huh? I was I peeking around, sneaking around. 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 Sneaky devil. <laughs> 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 um, Yes. So I, um, you remember a, probably a couple of months ago and you were writing at the top of your posts, you were saying, oh, yeah. if you're not a member of this group, yep. um, please click below, join. And you got asterisks, you got little yep. asterisks and that. And I said to you, I said, um, if you take that off, if you put it at the bottom and 
because I think at the time you were maybe a little bit concerned that your engagement had gone down mm -hmm. and that was so 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 it's yeah, why don't you say what you did and, and what, what when you changed it, what happened? Because I'm sure I, you remember that. Yes, actually, and the conversation came up totally unrelated. And, and, and you said, hey, I was looking at your posts and I see that you're putting this here and I think you should move it to the bottom. And I was like, oh, yeah, because I, I, I and you just randomly told me that. And I just remember thinking, yeah, I, I was kind of wondering um, why my engagement had, like, I felt like it had kind of dipped and you'll feel that from time to time, you'll feel it explode. You'll feel it dip. It's just kind of, it, it's just part of it. Um, and so I moved it to the bottom. And so that way, when somebody gets a notification, they're actually seeing a little snippet of what it is that I'm talking about for the day. So like, for example, this week we're talking about content. So I'll have a little something to kind of catch the eye. Um, and, and tease, you know, tease in about content. And then at the bottom, you know, they make their way down and they're like, oh, I'm not a member. I need to, I need to join. So yeah, it, it worked just yeah. doing that one yeah. little change. I, yeah, one little change. And that's what we did for Laura as well today. So yes. Yeah, I just want to add one little thing because you both said it actually. I read that, and I started doing this and saw a big difference. If you put the first line in capitals of whatever, oh, like a headline, it would really be working. <sighs> yeah. And I get a lot of people Just yell at people. Just exactly. scare them into so submission, and they'll do it. But but, uh, but only the first line. <laughs> yeah, if, if you, line. you know that as well. If you do any more than that, then it. I, I do use. You know, I capitalize my keywords throughout my posts as well, which is kind of get home. Mm. Uh, so we had we had here. Uh, if I'm altering what I am saying by doing what I'm told, why would I appreciate posting content that is not me? If you understand what I'm saying, I don't understand that. Sorry. Could you rephrase that, please, uh, Carter? Sorry. Doing... Yeah, if you could rephrase that. Yeah, if you could rephrase that. Um, and, and yeah, just, uh, I guess what I would say to that is, you should be posting content that is you. You, I mean, you nobody's telling you to take someone else's content and alter it. You're supposed to take information and ideas and have your own unique thoughts and insights about that, and that's what you should be posting. Hopefully, I hopefully I understood mm -hmm. that. Maybe we need. To more information on that but yeah, yeah you just, should just never be know. yeah perfect great thank you all right um one thing i was going to say I which is... just to add to that sorry Gavin. No, go for it. what i try and tell if, if people are struggling with content is just to we're not asking you to reinvent the wheel but just to reiterate what what um, nicole said there is go, go and learn something you know the cart methods take action take knowledge put it into action get some results and then teach it so you know, it's not it's not about copying people. It's just about no copy and um, putting your own words to it. Basically. I think that hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> yes, yeah, no just, copy just re paste. Repost it as well. <laughs> uh, and there's a bit, there's a big training ah. that I've done in, in this week's. Um, uh, course uh, training as well about the curating content based on what Nicole had uh, taught previously. Um, something really important if you're on the call right now, pay close attention just for a couple of minutes. If your mind has wandered or anything like that, just come back because there's something that I, I, I that I need to kind of announce very briefly. Um, and we'll talk more about it. No, no, I'm not using the Zygonic effect or anything like that. I might be a little bit, but <laughs> I guess I better um, pay attention to what you're saying. Yeah, well, let's put it this way. Our ambassadors that we're working with now, that you've all seen in the communities, I would like, in a way, you know, that there's, there's two reasons why they've got to where they are. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and action, without a doubt. And... For me, for myself, <laughs> taking action. For for my for myself, when I eventually broke through and started to have results and success, uh, it was because I got coached and because I invested in coaching. Now I've been working directly with um, all of our ambassadors, and you know that's the great thing about having somebody there or having a a, a small having somebody that you can work with or somebody that you can look up to. Essentially, who is your ambassador? Who can guide you when you might be stuck? Who can help you get through hurdles? Who can help you um, 
like what, what we just talked about, you know, I was looking at Nicole's content, we changed one little thing and she probably got three, four times more engagement. We've just done the same with Laura. Uh, and there's so many little, just little points that we've been working on every Tuesday at nine o'clock, we do uh, essentially a mastermind meeting. Now we call it a superstar squad, a superstar squad. And a superstar squad is a small little gathering of people, kind of like a mastermind with a specific ambassador. So um, yeah, just just keep that in your mind because very soon within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be announcing a couple of spaces available in Superstar Squad, okay? So there may be a, an opportunity there, just keep watching and pay close attention <laughs> in places. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, would, wouldn't would you say that the the coaching from somebody that's been there and done it before made a big difference? Oh heck yeah! Oh my gosh, without a doubt. I mean, for me, I think it took what would have taken me, I don't know, what five years maybe or never, <laughs> and like fast tracks it fast tracks you and and into results and sort of like like we were saying earlier, it helps you bypass all of the the aches and pains and growing pains and and you just basically get to learn from someone else's mistakes which is awesome yeah yeah there's nothing like it i don't what think about you, Laura? What, what, what did you what did you for find? me it's just night and day i mean i think everybody that's probably spoken to me before knows that i've been in network marketing for seven years and got nowhere fast because i had no coaching no support no I was treading water I was my product sales were fine but I could not recruit to save my life and um it was because I was doing it all wrong I didn't have I basically just got told to make that 100 list and keep banging that 100 list and keep banging that 100 list and keep speaking to people and keep cold contacting people <laughs> give your car to the person at the supermarket all that uh. kind of crap um which you know has its place I'm not knocking it but it just after seven years, there's only so much of that you can do. Um, so yeah, it was to, to find networking superstars and to find a coaching system that I can apply easily in a really limited period of time in a day, because I'm really, really strapped for time mm. as a general rule, um, has been immense. And you know, I've sponsored it in my team, I have all these people to speak to, I've made really good friends. Making commissions, and, that's the most important thing, my one commission. of the very important things. <laughs> so, um, but for me, it's Right now, it's not even about the commission for me, even though that's awesome. Yeah. It's just about the change in myself, the change in my business, how I feel about the whole thing, the fact that I've got you guys to talk to, and I actually feel like a part of something instead of just being out there completely alone with a huge company behind me that isn't actually doing anything to help me. So yeah, it's totally coaching is the way forward. If you aren't doing it, you don't have a coach get one yeah yeah with, without it i'm sure robin uh would uh, oh, probably yeah. say something similar. i know if you're robin you're just sitting there quiet going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i mean to me the biggest thing was the family because i've been in forever and I, I was successful but i was always by myself so it's so nice to you know be able to send somebody a message nicole knows you know i'll tell her you know i have a question about this you know and she'll get right back to me or she'll send it to me and i you know said something and, like what do you think yeah you know yeah it's just just somebody to bounce ideas off of and tell you you're being an idiot or not, you know? <laughs> and, and superstar squads essentially are like alliances as well. And you have accountability partners and people that you can bounce ideas from as well. So yeah, let's move on to um, perfect status update number three. It's kind of the same as two, but instead of it being a value post, it's a value video. Um, now, some of us do video. I certainly do a lot of videos, but my videos now tend to be mostly um, members only content. So through the six steps, I mean, you know, in the first module, it was like 14 video trainings um, with obviously a lot of a lot of uh, value in there. In this week's module about content creation, there's seven trainings. Now, I don't normally go for massive, massive amounts, and you know, we try and keep these webinars to about an hour. But there's, there's, you know, there's two hours worth of content there. Um, so, as you're creating your content, you might want to think about video. And I know Hannah, uh, Hannah Kathleen, who is here, she's literally just started a 30-day video challenge that she's been doing, and she's been posting her video um each day and you know the great thing with video is that just like now this is a video isn't it and you get to know us you get to know our personalities a bit more it we come when you first do video it, it 
it can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, and I've got some tips that I teach inside of this week's training as well about how to actually get over your fear of doing creating content and doing videos. Uh, let's move on to number four. If you've got any questions again, uh, please post them in the questions box. In fact, let me do one more of these and then I will answer Debbie's question or we will answer Debbie's question. Um, perfect status update number four is something that these girls are very good at. Let's put it that way. Now, what could it be? <laughs> Now I'm dying um, to hear again. What is this time? I don't know, but so, I like it. I like the good stuff. This is good. Keep telling me. I'll, I'll I'll go to Robin on this one first because when I was doing the trainings today, I saw something that Robin did well, oh, um, no. and that is a quick question. Oh yeah, a quick question. I ask a question at least once a day. Yeah, and do you get much engagement on it? I get fifty plus comments on most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one I saw today was 25 or 25. more. It's early. Quite <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so a quick question. Quick question, yeah. One word answer, you know, what's your favorite color, favorite ice cream? I, I get favorite food. Like, quick, easy, just loving, having fun. Remember, the 10% should be fun. So, Which tells about. you something. If you're paying attention, people want to react when they – when it's quick and easy and they can do it. Because remember, social media can be a very fast paced experience for people. We don't have time to sit down and read a diatribe and watch a 30 minute video and then write a paragraph back to you. People aren't gonna do that. So little, pay attention to your audience. You know, you'll, you'll get clues from them, what they're willing to engage with. And that's a great example. Okay, so, uh Answer question time. Uh, Debbie says, are you referring to content for the community after we get people in or content to be posted to gain members? For Facebook specifically, where are you talking about posting? Your own profile or where? Well, in this week's module, again, we go into detail about that. And in fact, I give you uh, something that I call your daily content creation plan. And I go into detail about how to do that. Essentially, you know, there's, there's two types of content that, that I talk about or that we, we teach. Um, one type is feeder content that feeds new members, kind of like generating traffic, but it feeds new members from other social media sites or even paid traffic. Uh, could be Instagram, could be Pinterest, could be LinkedIn, could be Google+, could be your Facebook profile, that's a feeder as well. Uh, could be a Facebook fan page, that's a feeder where you post feeder content. The goal is to bring people from somewhere into your community. And then inside of your community, you wanna be posting number one, value-based content. Like we talked about, you create value where you teach something to that audience. And number two, engagement-based content to get people to engage. Just like Robin just said, you know, what's your favorite ice cream? You know, it's not business related, but I can guarantee you're gonna get a lot of comments from questions like that. Nicole, Nicole asks occasionally, what is your favorite wine? <laughs> what's you your favorite are drink? sneaking around, aren't you? <laughs> I didn't know you were paying attention to what I was Boxed doing over here. Um, you can't help it, right? Like, oh, I get this wine yeah, stuff off that's my a good page. <laughs> um, Evan so, but you don't say, respond, what's up with that? I don't, well, I, are I don't, you red or white? I mean, or, I did, did I not? Did I, not? I did respond. Wine wine I responded last week. to Robin. Yeah. You know, now I'm offended. Yep, my, now, now I'm offended. Now, do, you, do you know how many groups I'm in? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Evan, Evan just said, um, should we add you guys to our groups when they're created? I would prefer it if you didn't. Um, and in one of the trainings, I specified that 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 don't, if possible, um, I would say add your ambassador, I would speak to them first and add them. And I would be happy to be in. It's a tricky one because at the moment, you know, we've I've got uh, probably 12 or 15 ambassadors who are all posting good quality content. And I think I'm in each of those communities, which means my notifications every hour is about 30 notifications. Now I know I can turn the notifications off, but then what's the point of being in the group? Um, so, you know, if you speak to the person that referred you and, you know, the same with everybody here, speak to the person that referred you, your ambassador first, and just double check with them because, you know, we're happy to be, but I think one of the biggest things that I want to um, discourage is just adding people 
randomly to your own group. You know, we never, ever add people to a group because you could actually get into trouble for that. So always ask somebody first and ideally with, um, with your with your prospects you want to attract them you don't you never want to add them so hope that answers your question evan kind of a gray area in a way you know i'm i'm fine with being with joining groups as long as i know there's a purpose and a reason uh, and you know it's with the people that i'm i'm personally with because as networking superstars grows if we had 50 to 100 to a thousand ambassadors and if we get added to a thousand groups i think my facebook will literally just explode can I, can I make two points? That's yeah. why my hand is raised. Yes, I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know if you knew what I was doing. Yeah. Like, why am I sitting over here with my hand up, thing. raising my hand? Brandy yeah. You promised you have a brand you promise always, It's important to, um, like Gavin said, you don't want to just dump people in. I always tell people in my community, think about it as if you were doing it in person. Would you really grab a person and shove them into a room? Like, would you really grab them and <laughs> shove them into a meeting without, you know, without saying, hey, would you like to come join us in this meeting? We've got X, Y, Z going on. No, you would not do that. So please don't do it on social media. It is the same, even though you have the computer barrier. Um, you know, just think in terms of, of that kind of common sense, social common sense, I guess, of what would you think? Would I do this to somebody in real life? No, then, then it's probably not a good idea to do it on social media either. And that's a good rule of thumb. But the reason yeah, why is because of your posture. If you are just dumping people in, you you basically just ruined your posture. You have no posture with these people. They're not going to engage with you. They don't want to be there. A lot of times they're going to leave. And like you said, Gavin, I mean, you're at risk because if you make somebody mad enough, they can click a button and say, you know, they don't they don't like what you have. And then there you go with the Facebook jail thing. So yeah, exactly. And, and what Nicole just said, you know, it wasn't specifically aimed to you, Evan, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yours was just a general question. So mm -hmm. Nicole is yes. speaking to everybody. General, so, general. You know, Evan brought a really yeah. good point up. So I appreciate your <laughs> It is a good there. question. Yeah. So, yeah. I think also just think about your own annoyance at being added to 100 sales groups or whatever rubbish you get added to when you are networking. Mm. You know, when, when you get up to like 2,000 friends, you know, you're, you're networking outside of Facebook and then suddenly they all add you to your group. It is annoying and you're like, have to go into each one and either leave properly or turn the notifications off or as Gavin said, it goes mental. So yep. just think about how annoying that is and you don't want to annoy other people. So invite them, speak to them give them the link. Now, you know what, if you are part of our process, in order to start your group, you're going to have to add one person in. And that person should be your sponsor, that person, your sponsor will be very happy to be that person for you, you just need to say, hey, I'm starting my community. And I'd love for you to be my first person. And of course, they're going to say yes. So yeah, keep exactly. that in mind. When you get asked, you do definitely. Okay, number five is uh, perfect Facebook status oh. update. Number five is uh, the eye-catching image, an image, but you can't, <laughs> you can't just take images from Google randomly and post them because, well, you can't. So you need to be either, I mean, has anybody got a, res a good resource that they would use to create images? I know many of you have, so mm -hmm. share your resource. You go, Robin, you're the queen of images. <laughs> Do it, girl. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, we missed that. Let's move on. <laughs> How many <joking? laughs> We couldn't hear you, you for muted. some reason. Oh, you're still muted. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, now I can hear you. Me. It's working in and out. Hurry, I hurry. I was going to say, I, it's getting worse outside, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, and you're cutting um, in and out. Yeah, I use, well, I create my own images on Canva, so that's it. And then, really, all you got to do, if you want to, is if you Google like photo stock images you can find tons of free ones on there that are non-copyrighted and they're great for backgrounds and everything so just google it there's so many to pick from it sounds good what's your awesome. that? yeah good stuff we'll, we'll, we'll move forward thank you for that uh, resource we'll move forward so images are important uh, number six because i want to get the questions in as well this training will be this is obviously for everybody here who is not in the six steps who want to get this as well just know that there's a number of updates that you can post I go through this in detail inside of the back office of the Six Step Sponsoring Sequence Pro, which you'll get access to tomorrow in module, essentially module two, you know, it's the second part of the, of the training. The sixth is 
recommend a resource or a resource, something that you use, something that you like, something that you enjoy. You know, um, I recommended, let me just find my my new freedom journal that I know a few of you probably have got as well. I recommended that the other day and, you know, gave a link to it. And you know, I asked a question as well. Uh, I took a little photo of me holding it, but just recommend something that you use. If, you know, I know many of these girls and many of the ambassadors always recommend, you know, their image sharing stuff, or the posts and content and websites that they use. So always recommend, but you don't want to do it too often. You don't just want to constantly share all of, I mean, the, how many times do I see it where somebody just posts a link and that's it? You've got to frame your content. You've got to put a little reason why and then put the link and then give a call to action at the bottom. So uh, sharing that. If anyone's got any questions, there's a couple of other questions that I want to answer afterwards that were left in the group. Um, Les, I'll reply to yours in a second. If anybody's got any questions, uh, please post them in the question side, not the chat side. Otherwise, they probably won't get answered just because it goes really quick. So number, number seven, the curiosity approach. Curiosity. And again, this kind of comes down to that. Um, it's a teaser. What we what we talked about a lot last week, I think it was, is we talked about how you get engagement. And rather than just giving somebody a link, it's like after this webinar, um, tomorrow in the comment in the group, I, or the day after, I will say, hands up who missed yesterday's webinar. We were talking about you know, how to create content, seven perfect Facebook status updates. If you'd like a copy of the replay, or if you missed it, leave a comment below. It's it's kind of curiosity because people want that, but people can't just get it because I don't just give people the link because I want to create engagement in the community. So you can do this with anything, anything at all. And you'll watch as we do it more and more and more. So you, you don't want to do it all the time either. You know, if you only make people ask for the link at some point, it's going to go a bit sour. So you want to make sure you intersperse it with giving value sometimes giving the link sometimes getting people to comment for it um but yeah it's it's uh, it's very very powerful um okay so to answer les's question should our groups be public closed or secret with these groups and with these communities personally i would always make it public because you can get so much more viral traffic um i mean again you know sarah who's on one of our, our Awesome ambassador Sarah Allison. Uh, she she gets a lot of people into her group because of her keywords. You know, network marketing uh, support group because it's a public group. Because when somebody joins the group, other people see that so and so just joined the group, and you know their friends see it. When somebody comments in the group, they see it. But people still want to be part of it, even if people can see the content that's in the group. They still want to be part of it. So always go for uh, public. If you've got the, a, a team group, uh, which you don't want people to see, then make it secret. Uh, and if you've got something that you don't mind people seeing, but you want it to be private, um, yeah, make it private. OK, uh, Ev uh, Emma. And Evan said, you talked about doing 10% promotional content. How do you do that without inviting everyone in the group to promote their own business? It would turn into a giant spam fest eventually, wouldn't it? Um, I guess you've got, if, if I've interpreted your question right, um, your group, your community, individual communities, so yours specifically, it should be for you. It's your prospecting tool. It's your group, therefore you're the one that um, controls what happens. Now the challenge is if if you're if you've got other people's people, so if members of your community are network marketers and they decide to invite their team, then you have a little bit of a challenge. You've got to decide: Do you want to make your group and your community a prospecting place for you? for you to build your business, just like many of our ambassadors have done with their community. With the Networking Superstars community, I cannot do that. I cannot take and I will not ever take somebody else's people because we've got community members, we've got network marketers, we've got ambassadors 
all bringing people into networking superstars. Therefore, we've got to create a, f a filtering process to do that. Um, and, you know, I've, I have ways of doing that because I know who's come, who I, I referred. We know who Nicole's referred. We know who Eddie's referred, who's a, who's a pretty big network marketer who's going to be inviting his people in. We know who Laura's referred. We know who Robin's referred because we have an application process in place. So it means that we can speak to our people and then send everybody else's people back to them. But you can only do that with my very special, clever software. <laughs> Uh, which yeah um, and clever. you know there's ways to do it but you just need to make sure um, kind of decide on the purpose of your community hopefully that answered that question there was another question that was quite good in the chat instead of the comment um that said i'm thinking of aiming from um gorgeous purple i'm thinking of aiming my group at target market customers will this approach still work if my posts aren't about network marketing facebook engagement etc that's a good question do you want to answer that one? Um, yes, it will still work. But what you have to do is lead with value. So you're not just trying to make a sale. So if you're using your group as a product base instead of a recruitment base, then you know that's OK too. I have um, one of my um, pro people who actually decided to have two groups. She has one group, which is very product based, but she um, is in health and wellness with um, a personal training business and a network marketing business. She combines that through creating content based on holistic health. So she teaches lots about meditation, lots about different foods to eat, what are good recipes, all those kinds of fabby things. And it is a really, really good group. Um, and then she understood that from the network, network marketing point of view, she felt from a recruitment point of view, she wanted to offer value on that. So she, she decided in her right to start a second group and she manages that well because she has the time to do that. So it's really your choice, but you can use it as product. And I think you just have to think outside the box on the value that you want to give um, and not be leading with the product, lead with the value, and, and then feed the product in through that, if that makes sense. Perfect. Yes, makes sense. Uh, and I'm sure it does as well to the person that asked the question. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura. Um, Nicole, do you want to answer Ray's question? <laughs> what is he asking? Can you I see it? I don't see it. No. Robin, what have I missed? What have I missed? <laughs> it says Gavin Milford is the King Kong oh, of marketing. I, I didn't see that. True. I thought true. <laughs> true or true. True or true. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. Typical Ray style question. Yeah, I thought he was asking a serious question. I, I thought I had missed something important. What was a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I've got a few other questions I need to answer um, that people left in the group. So I'll, I'll run through them. We may go for another 10 minutes if anybody needs to jump off. Uh, Lucy, Lucy, I don't know if I can write them in, but Lucy Aldrich said, uh, how do we respond to those members who are not involved in network marketing? My group is on confidence building and I'm getting quite a few who have low self-esteem, depression, or who are either working in a different area not at all again you know similar to um similar to what laura said i mean i guess you've always got to look at what your end goal is if your end goal is to build a network marketing business and that's the reason you're doing what you're doing then ideally your group will fit so if your network marketing business was talking about building confidence and was selling in from was selling trainings or books or um you know, educational products to help people build confidence it would be a perfect fit but if you're uh, you know, network marketing businesses in um, health and wellness or uh, you know, weight loss or travel, then having a confidence building group and having a network marketing business like that, it's kind of a mismatch. Um, you know, you can still do your confidence building group as, a, as kind of a hobby. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a trick. It's a, it, it's a tricky one. It's message to market match again, ultimately. So yeah, you may, you may want to, to rethink that. Uh, and second question from Lucy was, what is the best method to create information? Is it worth spending money on blogs or are there other ways which are perhaps free? Uh, yes, there is another way which is free. And that is your community and your group. That is at the moment all you need. OK, blogs are brilliant. Uh, many of us have blogs now. Many of the ambassadors, many of um, people that have been doing this for a little while. But one of the reasons that we do high touch 
is because when you first get started, you don't need to worry too much about the technical side of things. And you can post your content in your group and in your community and the people that want to see it will see it. You know, your, your group essentially is a hub, just like a blog is a hub. Now, a blog has got more benefits because it's there for people can search, people can find, you can organize that, you know, people can dig around, whereas in a group, it's quite linear. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered that one. Uh, Eddie says, how do you revive a dead group? Um, you go back through, and this is what Nicole actually did for a little while. She, Nicole realized that when she went back to the first members in the group that she hadn't communicated with for, for months, you know, she took people through a conversation, then they went quiet. Nicole went back through many of the members and we're about to do it with one of my groups as well and just private messaged each person um and you know you'll get a response from some you won't get a response from others but anybody you do get a response from is now going to start to see your content so when you post in the group when you post on your profile they're going to see that and just try and reignite that it's a manual process as far as i'm aware um unless you've got other strategies in place to be able to do that but yeah Otherwise, they're not, you know, people aren't going to see your content generally if they haven't engaged for two, three, four, five, six months. And they may have got, they may have been, they may be disinterested and be off doing something else. Um, cool. I'm not sure if the last one was a question, Eddie. So I'll, uh, I have two cold groups before joining Networking Superstars with about 80 people each. Awesome. Well, that's going to explode very soon. Um, Yasmin, a question that I have here. Uh, she said, this is a question that I've got, uh, that they'd sent me, th that Yasmin had sent me through. Uh, do I, do I need to create another new fan page for my personal brand, probably based around women's issues and from there drive traffic to my new personal branded group? Again, ideally you want to create thing, make things as simple as possible and ideally have, well, your fan page is a feeder method. So it feeds people into your community and into your group. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a fan page on this topic, a fan page on this topic, a group on this topic, a group on this topic, a blog on this topic, a website on this topic, you're not going to succeed because you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to go in multiple different directions. So ideally eliminate as much of it as you can focus on what's your end goal. What do you want to achieve? What's your network marketing business? Are you looking for business builders or product sales? and then create your group around that. And if you wanna create a fan page, which at the moment I don't necessarily recommend, in the past I would have, but it's hard to build it. Um, and then just focus on you know, finding a traffic source or finding a feeder method to feed your community. Um, Yasmin also says, can we drive traffic from our Facebook profile page too? Yes, you can. And there's a sp very specific way to do it because Facebook doesn't want you to post links on your profile. So in this week's content, we have a training called the feeder teaser method to getting started generating leads, which is all about using your Facebook profile um, and teasing people or, or feeding people from your profile in a special way. So make sure you go through that training. Um, anything else that you've seen coming up that we need to answer at all? Um. Why would you, um, you have 2,500 fans and no engagement on a fan page, would you delete the page? Uh, I'd keep the page, just keep the page, it's useful. You, the good thing with a page is you can always do paid ads in the future and then you can uh, target those fans with a, page ad, a paid ad, whereas if you delete the page, you essentially lose the ability to uh, create an ad to those people. Mm -hmm. Cool, good stuff. Did I ask, answer everybody's questions? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Yasmin also says she's in the beginning to look at setting up a blog to support the branding process. Do you have any good designers who can create a logo? I'd like a personal recommendation. Uh, yes, I do. I have three designers I can recommend to you. Uh, so if you message me privately or uh, yeah, send me a message privately and just ask me tomorrow if you're watching this and I can direct you to somebody. I've got three designers, different pricing levels, one of them is quite quite pricey but is incredibly good the other one's low price and is you know, reasonably good so you know you get what you, essentially you get what you pay for in graphic terms um but yeah let me know uh tamra 
I would recommend, yeah, Tamara says, uh, do you use the seven Facebook status updates on profile to invite to community? Generally, no, because you don't want to be posting links on your profile. Um, if you post a link on your profile, you run the risk of having somebody mark it as spam because they don't want to see your updates. And they, um, yeah, so you, there, there's a way, a, a teaser method, a feeder teaser method that you'll learn in um, tomorrow's module. So hopefully that'll answer. Cool, awesome. Well, hopefully uh, that answers ev everything. Anybody else wanted to add anything before we wrap up? Or all good? I think you got if anyone's got any questions, of course, let you post in the community as well, and we'll answer them as possible and uh, whenever possible. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I can just see a couple of things there. Cool. Just reading Danny's post and reading, reading Alexander's. Um, if anyone, yeah, if anyone's got any specific questions, obviously, um, post and, and message us. So be on the lookout for the Superstar Squad openings because I don't know when it will happen again. Uh, but if you are looking for somebody to literally guide you through the process, just like I've done with Nicole, with Laura, with Robin, and with the rest of our ambassadors, who everybody can go through the trainings on their own. That's great. But who's going to be there to say whether you're going in the right direction? Or who's going to be there to be there when you post something that may not get that much engagement or you may do something in a different way or there's there's a lot of hidden things that only we know that you may not know yet um and yes obviously you can go through the trainings etc on your own and you will get results and you will 100 percent succeed it just might take you a little bit longer than if you had somebody to say cracking the whip let's say because <laughs> that always works well Back in the whip, good God. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of operation are we running here? The comments are coming in now. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, Gavin. Cool. All right. <laughs> good okay. stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you, see you all uh, next week and yeah. be in the community and look out for the module tomorrow. And thanks again for being here, and thanks to everybody for doing what you do. See you soon. We're, we're Gavin and the Angels. I like that. What? Gavin and the Angels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Gavin and the Angels. Way to go. That's awesome. Who